New Robot Revealed, Weekly Robot News. Hello, viewers. Welcome back to your one-stop shop for all news robotics. We're back once more with the latest, sometimes shocking happenings of the robotic tech world. From developments into robotic chefs that can actually taste food and TurtleBot 4 coming into the picture, all the way to finding out how high a robot can possibly jump, Asimo's retirement, and a brand new robotic rat, we have it all and more. So, without further ado, let's jump right into our weekly updates. However, before we do, we request you to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss another upload of ours. Having said that, let's get right to it. Highlights of the week. Taste of the future. A robot chef has been trained to taste food at different stages of the chewing process to assess whether it's sufficiently seasoned. Working in collaboration with domestic appliances manufacturer Beko, researchers from the University of Cambridge trained their robot chef to assess the saltiness of a dish at different stages of the chewing process, imitating a similar process in humans. Their results could be useful in the development of automated or semi-automated food preparation by helping robots to learn what tastes good and what doesn't, making them better cooks. When we chew our food, we notice a change in texture and taste. For example, biting into a fresh tomato at the height of summer will release juices, and as we chew, releasing both saliva and digestive enzymes, our perception of the tomato's flavor will change. The robot chef, which has already been trained to make omelets based on human tasters' feedback, tasted nine different variations of a simple dish of scrambled eggs and tomatoes at three different stages of the chewing process, and produced taste maps of the different dishes. The researchers found that this taste-as-you-go approach significantly improved the robot's ability to quickly and accurately assess the saltiness of the dish over other electronic tasting technologies, which only test a single homogenized sample. The results are reported in the journal Frontiers in Robotics and AI. ClearPath announces TurtleBot 4. ClearPath Robotics is opening pre-orders for the newest, fanciest TurtleBot, the TurtleBot 4. Built on top of iRobot's Create 3 in close partnership with Open Robotics, the TurtleBot 4 is a relatively affordable way to get started with ROS2 even as a robotics beginner. And for folks looking for something more advanced, TurtleBot 4 also has the potential to help you extend your experience into graduate level research and beyond. TurtleBot 4's big differentiator is that it's designed to showcase ROS2, the powerful open source robotic operating system that is working hard to successfully transition from robotics research into an all purpose framework that can safely and reliably power commercial robots as well. This is the first version of the TurtleBot to run ROS2 from the ground up including the Create 3 base, and offers an opportunity for anyone from precious middle schooler on up to learn ROS2 in a safe and well-supported way, on real hardware that is affordable-ish. There will be two versions of the TurtleBot 4 available for pre-order from ClearPath. Both versions use the iRobot Create 3 development platform as a mobility base, with the same power and charging system including a base station. The cost of the TurtleBot 4 Lite is $1,195 US dollars, while the TurtleBot 4 Standard is $1,850 US dollars. Pre-orders will be available through ClearPath distributors in North America, Europe, and Asia, and shipping will begin in July. Finding out how high a robot can possibly jump. Over the last decade or so, we've seen an enormous variety of jumping robots. With a few exceptions, these robots look to biology to inspire their design and functionality. This makes sense, because the natural world is full of jumping animals that are absolutely incredible, and matching their capabilities with robots seems like a reasonable thing to aspire to. With creatures such as ants, frogs, birds, and galagos, robots have tried, and occasionally succeeded in some specific ways, to mimic their motions. The few exceptions to this bio-inspired approach have included robots that leverage things like compressed gas and even explosives to jump in ways that animals cannot. The performance of these robots is very impressive, at least partially, because their jumping techniques don't get all wrapped up in biological models that tend to be influenced by non-jumping things, like versatility. For a group of roboticists from the University of California, Santa Barbara, and Disney Research, this led to a simple question. If you were to build a robot that focused exclusively on jumping as high as possible, how high could it jump? And in a paper published recently in Nature, they answer that question with a robot that can jump 33 meters high, 
which reaches right about eyeball level on the Statue of Liberty. These videos are unfortunately not all that great, but here's a decent one of the jumping robot, which the researchers creatively refer to as our jumper, launching itself, landing, self-riding, and then launching again. Even when retired, Asimo manages to impress. Honda's Asimo humanoid robot is retiring. For the last 20 years, Asimo has been performing at the Honda showroom in Tokyo, Japan, but these regular demonstrations are now at an end. We've known for a while that this was coming. Honda announced back in 2018 that it was halting Asimo development in favor of working on robots with more practical applications, like robots for elder care and disaster relief. But what blows us away about Asimo, even now, is just how impressive it still is. The most recent version of Asimo was announced in 2011. As we watch this performance now, we have to keep reminding ourselves that this was all happening more than 10 years ago. That's decade-old sensing, actuation, compute, batteries. Even still, what Asimo is demonstrating are things that are absolutely not easy for humanoid robots even now. And like, the robot still looks so futuristic, right? The design is wonderful, all the movements are buttery smooth, and Asimo would not be out of place in any science fiction movie. This little robot really did set a, still somewhat aspirational, standard especially relative to other humanoid robots, which have only within the last few years been able to match and then significantly surpass Asimo's performance, if not its looks. The current generation of Asimo is part of a lineage of humanoid robotics research at Honda stretching back to the mid-1980s. But Honda has more recently seemed to realize that they could take the Asimo platform and the philosophy of humanoid robotics that it represents only so far. And as of 2018, the company shifted development to a clearly Asimo-inspired but much more robust robot called E2DR. Clearly, there's a lot more potential with a rugged platform like E2DR, both for research and for exploring practical tasks in the near, or at least nearer, term. We're glad that Honda is continuing the research into legged robots that it pioneered so many decades ago. But E2DR is not Asimo. It's not trying to be, and that's probably a good thing but a part of us still mourns the vision of friendly and helpful humanoids that Asimo represented. We'll miss you, buddy. Robotic Rat Climbs, Crawls, and Turns on a Dime There has been much interest in designing robots that are agile enough to navigate through tight spaces. This ability could be useful in assessing disaster zones or pipelines, for example. But choosing the right design is crucial to success in such applications. Though legged robots are very promising for use in real-world applications, it is still challenging for them to operate in narrow spaces, explains Ching Shi, a professor at the Beijing Institute of Technology. Large quadruped robots cannot enter narrow spaces, while micro-quadruped robots can enter the narrow spaces but face difficulty in performing tasks owing to their inability to carry heavy loads. Instead of designing a large four-legged robot or micro-robots, she and his colleagues decided to create a robot inspired by an animal highly adept at squeezing through tight spaces and turning on a dime, the rat. In a study published on 7 April in IEEE Transactions on Robotics, they demonstrate how their new rat-inspired robot, Skuro, or small-sized quadruped robotic rat, can walk, crawl, and climb over objects, and turn sharply with unprecedented agility. What's more, Skuro can recover from falls, like its organic inspiration. Interesting, isn't it? That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.